Hello everybody and welcome back to Horizon Zero Dawn where I'm kind of hoping we can save that kid and his mom because I don't know if they're... It seems like the mom's trying to protect her baby, basically, and I wonder how Avad feels about his brother. You know? Like, does he want to save him? He's just a little kid. And like, maybe the reason the dad was like... The former Sun King was like, save this one is because he was like young enough he felt like he could manipulate him. The other side of the tower. Look for a vent. Can I get down? <clears throat> Examine. I see you've been here before. Obviously. Now, it's very important that you hear what I'm about to say. I've shown you the way in, but this humble vent marks a point of no return. Ah. Before you descend into the depths here, you should be fully committed, equipped, and focused. No distractions. If you have errands to run, do them first or hold your peace. I won't tolerate whining. Is that clear? You're the one in my head, you man. You tolerate what I give yeah. you, Silence. I didn't ask you along for the ride. Okay, so this is that point where someone said that this is like uh, the point of... It, it seems like a point of no return. But it is not. It's just a very long quest. So, yeah. I think I will stick with it. I... I feel like I'm pretty good. Oh, I have a sneak outfit, I have an ice outfit, I have a shock outfit, and I have... Wait, uh, oh, okay. Outfit. I, have, cause I, like, I have a fire one too. Uh, Silent Hunter, yeah, so that's the fire one. It's not a great one, but you know, it's there, it is what it is. And I have good weapons. Three purples. So, and I'm pretty over leveled. Yeah, I'm level 30. <laughs> this is a level 21. So, as long as I play it smart, I think I should be good to go. I'm heading down. I've spent a lifetime trying to uncover the secrets of this world. Where the machines came from. How the old ones achieved such marvels only to fall into silence and death. A lifetime of failure. As year by year, decade after decade, I hit walls I could not break, doors I could never breach. Hello. Until a Nora Huntress marched out of the savage east. And, voila, for her, all the deepest secrets of the earth were laid bare. I suspect you will have an easier time with this door than I did years ago. Okay. Hold for identiscan. Genetic profile confirmed. Entry authorized. Why didn't the other one? Malfunction. Malfunction. Are Malfunction. You, kidding me? you don't hear me laughing. Shut up. There's gotta be another way. Hey! Elizabeth Sobek here! Requesting access! Access request acknowledged. Root command functions available. Do you wish to proceed? I do! Get me through this door! Analyzing. Primary access inoperable due to mechanical failure. Emergency venting procedure likely to circumvent blockage. Do you wish to proceed? Yes. Uh, yes. Emergency venting authorized. Everything. That will draw attention. We won't have this place to ourselves for long now. We? Last I checked, I was the one whisking my life down here. Yes, fine. <laughs> Will you please get moving? There's so much to learn in less time than I'd hoped. Okay. Welcome to Project Zero Dawn. Zero Dawn. We found it. 
Are you really so surprised? Facility diagnostics detect multiple failures. Yeah, you don't sound so good. Attempting repair. So, what was this room? An entrance hall, perhaps. Have a look around. Why did they have like an entrance hall and everything for it? Like another incident. This morning's unfortunate incident with Dr. Popovic is another example of reception's need for additional support. We appreciate that Zero Dawn is an immensely complicated project, but as the staff who serve on the front line, we're tired of being neglected. As we have already requested, we need human translators, fluent in Polish, for example, security staff who can subdue enraged embryologists, for example, and dermal sedatives to calm persons who are screaming in Polish while hurling chairs and vases at reception staff, for example. Yes, most of the candidates are reasonably calm and well-behaved, but we need help handling the exceptions to that rule. Please ex respond. I don't know why you had a reception hall for this, but whatever. we need support too. Reception staff continues to require additional support managing ZD candidates when they arrive at the facility. Many are frightened or confused. Some are highly agitated. These are not the sort of persons who are accustomed to having information withheld from them. At minimum, we need human translators. The lang box are not sufficient. And mild sedatives for the extreme cases. Any and all support would be welcome. Perhaps you could start by responding to one of these mails. Yeah, they're not. They're ignoring them. They've got bigger things to be concerned about. I mean, I get it, right? containment patch thing. What? Oh, that was the one I just... Yes. So, what are they... I mean, if they... If, I don't know. That seems kind of odd. Like, what's being... Said? Please take a seat and wait for your name to be called. A selection of beverages and snacks are available. Hmm. A smaller room. So they were like bringing in people to work on the project and like they'd have to wait out here. Soundproofing. Would it be possible to improve the soundproofing between VR1 and the lounge area? Most of the candidates stay quiet during the presentation, but the ones who scream or sob can be plenty plainly heard by candidates waiting their turn in the lounge. Just a thought. Yeah. Cause what, so this is the they don't they don't really wait too long like they uh, they're like hey here's what we're gonna do we're gonna blow up the world restock or else for the fifth time please restock the lounge just selection of herbal teas if I have to listen to one more I can't throw a tantrum because we're out of organic cucumber mint or blackberry sage varietals I'm gonna lose it. Please respond, and this time no tempest in a teapot or steep to man jokes, okay? Well, I mean, you're in the middle of a war, like... There's, I, don't, I, think, I think organic teas aren't really a high priority. I don't think I'm gonna be encountering too many mean things, but... Look how many of these we can have now. How does this even... Interesting. Okay. Oh. Okay. Tie rope heavy. So they're all they're all heavy and I don't have an option between them. Okay, secure containment. Explore, explore. Please proceed into viewing room mm. one for an important message regarding the purpose All of your right. visit. Alright. Are we gonna get to see the message or no? What? What was this place? A holographic theater. CD01 data intact. Initiating playback. Okay, we're getting answers now. Welcome to Project Zero Dawn. I am General Harris, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States of America. I'm sure you've heard the rumors that Zero Dawn is a top-secret super weapons program. The 
technological miracle that will save us from the Pharaoh Plague, if Operation Enduring Victory can hold off the robots long enough. The reason I'm sure you've heard the rumors is that I'm the one who spread them, and they are all lies. Yeah. Zero Dawn is not a super weapons program, and it will not save us. Nothing will save us. And here's why. By the time the glitch was noticed, it was already too late. Nothing could stop the Pharaoh Plague. Nothing can. Its robots will continue to replicate and devour the biosphere. Life on Earth will be destroyed. Our planet reduced to a barren sphere. Global extinction is inevitable. No matter how many we kill, the robots just keep exponentially making more. If we had their deactivation codes, we could shut them all down. The entire swarm. But since their cryptographic protocols use polyphasic entangled waveforms, cracking a code set would take half a century. At best, we've got 16 months. Not exactly what you'd call a survival option. The destruction of a biosphere is not the sort of apocalypse you can wait out in a fallout shelter or a space station. There will be no Earth left to reclaim. Just a lifeless, toxic rock with several million pharaoh robots on it. Hibernating. Wow. Waiting for something to eat. This is the horrible truth behind the lies of Operation Enduring Victory. My lies. Lies designed to inspire millions of innocents to sacrifice themselves in battle. Why? One reason. To buy time for you and the work you will do here. Zero day. The day that life on Earth ceases to exist is coming fast. It cannot be stopped. The hope of Zero Dawn is that something new might come after. But I will leave it to Elizabeth Sobek to shine that thin ray of light into the darkness. Harris, out. Yeah. Wow. Wow! So it wasn't even... But they had to have... Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Life on Earth didn't cease to exist. He said it could not be stopped. But it was. Somehow... Somehow Elizabeth saved us. I've, I've got to keep looking. Find out how she did it. Unless... Unless it did happen. And somehow these these things were some maybe shelters that like genetic material for everything was saved in basically like an ark maybe like uh like a noah's ark type thing where there was dna for plants and animals and humans that were recreated and then after the feral robots went into hibernation, but they should have, then they should have, I feel like there was something that happened. Something to sort of stop the feral robots, because obviously the big bad ones are down, and they're being forced to reactivate, basically, by these cult members. Um, so this is, this is interesting, because they couldn't, I don't know. There was no way to stop it. Man, can you imagine? Can you imagine being the people who knew about this? That like their families were gonna die no matter what you did. The people that they loved, the people out there fighting for what they thought was, I mean, there was, I don't think there was any other way to do it. I literally don't think there's any other way to have these people do this. Like you're not gonna inspire people. The, the average civilian is not gonna be inspired by, hey, leave your families, leave your children behind and go out and fight. Like, wh like wh were, were people like, hey, we need to put children in safe facilities, and these guys are like, there's nothing. Like, there's nothing. You know? Like, ugh. It's heartbreaking. This is an interesting looking room. Kestrels. They got in. Through the vents. <gasps> Let nothing stop you from learning the truth. Spread out! If it moves, kill it! What is this place? Tomb? There is an upgrade available for the precision arrow. Doesn't look like it. 
like it. Yeah. Don't lie to me! I mean, it's sort of available, or maybe... Carrying only three of them. However, can I? Perfect. Can I jump on him? Accurate, yes. So these mechanical monstrosities, they don't just kill people, they feed off them? Not just people, all organic matter. Every living thing dissolves into nutrients. Millennia of evolution liquefied. The miracle of life reduced to bloody biofuel. In a word, yes. Who did this? Pharaoh? That asshole. Is he here? No, Doctor. Please, tell him Tom Pike wants a word. Now, get off! Get off! Uh, Doctor, uh, please! You get Ted Farrow in here! Yeah. I think, I don't know, I feel like Ted Farrow should have been, I don't know, executed for his, for what he did. I know everyone was gonna die anyway, but... Want to discuss? Oof. So, Mama, she was right. Pardon? My mother, she took her Bible real serious. Not just Texas bubble serious, Pentecostal serious. Favorite chapter? Revelations. Now, I didn't always understand her on account of all that speaking in tongues and such, but when she did use her words, it was always end times this and lake of fire that on account of sinful lifestyles. Speaking of which, mind if I smoke? A tobacco cigarette. Sorry, darling. My taste run classic. <laughs> Compliments your team tracked me down. Been a price on my head 18 months now. Sterling Malky was me, don't mind admitting. Been plenty of snakesters chasing the bounty, too. But I kept the zigging to their zag. How'd you finger me? I believe Dr. Sobek listed you as an alpha candidate. Priority snatch and grab. Always suspected she had a little thing for me. <gasps> hey, I don't suppose you got real coffee in this place. You know, blood coffee? What? Conflict cappuccinos? <laughs> Mr. Tate, I'm clearing you to proceed. Just go. Okay. So these are the interview candidates. Who previously worked for Faro Automated Systems? On the Chariot Line Silver application routines? I came here thinking this was a rendition. When your people took me, I thought, about time. I've been trying to swallow the guilt every day since. since, uh. Would you like to take a moment? No, no, no. I, I just. I really hoped. Zero Dawn was a way to undo it all. My work. And I'm sorry to say I was ever proud of it, but Ted could really sell a concept. And, and, and in the labs, in the, the, the light of creation, that first test run, when, when you saw they understood their own structures, could rebuild themselves from memory and light, there were no limits. God, there were no limits. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, like, things that all, people, it's like the Jurassic, uh, Park, right? It's like, people, they didn't, they didn't stop and wonder if they should, all they, all they saw was that they could, you know? Last door, heavily, was there something else? No. Yeah, we're good. 
Okay, well, I don't think there's really a way to get up top on these guys. Looks like I can kind of just maybe sneak around them. They're in a different room. Weird. Is there anything else? Good thing they can't see through windows. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good thing I run right into windows. To be fair, to be fair, I'm an idiot. It's fine. Don't, I'm never going to make fun of windows ever again. I kind of want what this guy has. Oh, when he turns around, when he turns around, he's mine. Still sniffing around. Um, can we pick up this weapon? And... We're too close to that tribe of primitive stuff us now. Uh, what? The data points. What did they contain? Lots of sadness. Stuff I'm sure you don't care about. Candidates must be allowed to ask questions and be given the necessary time to fully absorb the information they have received. This is for the counselors. It is important to be aware that candidates have just been exposed to triggers for severe mental and emotional trauma. Do not assume silence or outward calmness indicates acceptance. It is essential to stress that all other options for combating the feral plague and preserving the continuation of human life have been considered and found unworkable. Communicate this fact calmly but clearly and firmly. Familiarize yourself with data on the catastrophic environmental impact of nuclear engagements versus the swarm and unfeasibility of maintaining life in orbital lunar or undersea structures so that you can encounter a candidate's objections in depth. If a candidate asks for time alone to review the supplementary information, allow this without hesitation. Be sure to inform security personnel so the candidate can be monitored for attempts at self-harm. Yeah, that'd be something. Candidates should only be cleared to proceed to presentation two if you believe their mental state is sufficiently stable. Note that real-time support will be available via your focus. Security and mental crisis teams are... Being with Suzanne Alpert, environmental scientist. Doctor? I'm sorry, I wasn't, uh... Just stating your name. What were you thinking about, Doctor? Nothing the General said, not really. I was on the Syzygy East response team in 2051, just after the second earthquake compromised the reactor. I still dream about it, after all these years. The red zone spreading on the imaging slowly, so slowly, like a hand opening its fingers. Your involvement in that event is why you were asked for by name. Really? That's interesting. Because nothing worked. Nothing could grow there again. It was a catastrophic failure. But the red zone is a blip compared to global scale biomass reduction. The biosphere and hydrosphere will collapse, render the Earth uninhabitable long before the robots finish us. Enduring victory can't buy time against that. So, you'd better show me what Zero Dawn really is. Interesting. So they had even less time before, like, everything was gone. Or gonna be gone, you know? Here's another one. I'm sure you now understand the urgency of why we brought you here, Ms. Okilo. Captain Okilo, are you trying to thank me for not resisting? I believe we couldn't negotiate a diplomatic solution. When it came to my country's lithium, it was always a swarm that would be sent to negotiate. Metallurgic International, U.S. Robot Command. The markings changed, but the robots were the same. You have had considerable experience in human-robot conflict. Interesting. Yes, and I've got the prosthetic limbs to show it. Yet I continue to face this horror, even though the challenge was great. Cyber warfare. I thought Zero Dawn would be a, a Manhattan project to generate the deactivation codes. With the resources I had, I estimated code-breaking to be a hopeless endeavor. I was almost looking forward to being proved wrong. Unfortunately, your estimation was correct. 
As your General Hera said. So then, you did not bring me here to commiserate. What is left? I, I'm, I'm so curious what, how this... I feel like it maybe didn't work out exactly the way... I don't know. Look, uh, let's cut the mystery. You're building a colony ship. It's oh, man, obvious. I wish. And it's not gonna fly. I mean, literally. Remember the Odyssey? That multinational heap of space junk that's been in graveyard orbit since 57? That went nowhere real slow. And you have to get somewhere real fast. Uh, do you have any idea the immensity of the challenge to prep a new colony ship in time? To be clear, I'm not a worker on the project. Do you even understand how few people it could save? The whole generation ship concept is... is not gonna happen. It's the first thing you'd abandon in favor of embryonics. Uh, for that kind of storage we're talking, a lot of bulk, a lot of power, a lot of resources. So even if you do it, even if you build it and point it at Sirius X, there's no room for people on that thing, all right? If you could try to remain calm. But you people are crazy if you think you're getting off this rock. No one's getting off. Medical. Yeah, that's a... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, that would be one of the first things that you would try to think of, right? It's like living underwater, which underwater isn't going to work because that's part of the biomass. Um, living in space, like escaping to space, you know? But that's the kind of thing that you need decades, decades of work. And apparently they all be already tried to, like, send out coloni colonial ships, but they hadn't spent enough time doing space work to be able to do that and it was like abandoned and oh my gosh I mean that's the kind of thing where you're like Mass Effect we'll all get out yay on our art colonial ships and it doesn't work like that it took them like decades I think and that's in like a very futuristic initiating playback in a very futuristic society you've heard the bad news and it's all true the Pharaoh Plague is devouring the biosphere. Life itself will cease to exist. But does that have to be the end? What if we could give life a future? What if we could build a kind of seed from which, on a dead planet, life could blossom anew? This is the aim, the hope, of Project Zero Dawn to create a super-intelligent, fully automated terraforming system and bring life back from lifelessness. Wow! What would such a system require? At its core, it would need a true AI, fully capable of making the trillions of decisions necessary to reconstitute so, the biosphere. the mother! An immortal guardian, devoted to the reflourishing of life. We call it Gaia. Yeah! Mother Nature as an AI. But that's just the core of the system. She will need to be surrounded and empowered by a comprehensive suite of subordinate functions. Think of them as extensions of Gaia's mind, each dedicated to a specific purpose. Ah, now, these aren't AIs, but make God. no mistake, each presents an engineering challenge more profound than anything the human species has ever before attempted. Hardware that preserves and then gestates the billions of seeds and embryos from which life will be reborn. Wow, they actually did the it. The construction of underground facilities to hold it all. And that's just the start. They're gonna do construction underground. We have to build with the, the entire system. The beauty of a fully automated terraforming system is that it can build itself. Now, over the days to come, you'll learn how all these functions, all these pieces that you'll be working on, fit together. How we'll race the clock to execute our harvest initiatives, write the software, build the tech and the facilities. How we'll lock it down and seal it up before the inevitable occurs. But even more important, you'll know how it doesn't end here. How Gaia will generate those deactivation codes General Harris I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I meant to say that. And build the transmission arrays to broadcast them, shutting down the feral robots for good. 
how Gaia will not just build, but imagine any conceivable robot it needs to do its work across centuries. From detoxifying the Earth's ravaged atmosphere and poisoned seas, to the regreening of the Earth from cryopreserved seed stocks, to rewilding the Earth with animal life, and then, when all that is done, how a new generation of human beings spawned at cradle wow. facilities around the globe will partake of Apollo. The vast archive of human knowledge and cultural achievement from which they will learn of us. That that didn't our happen. World. And most important, how not to repeat our mistakes. This is giving me goosebumps. It's not an impossible dream. It is within our grasp if we work tirelessly and stop at nothing to achieve it. Wow. We can't stop life from ending. But if you will help me, help Gaia. We can give it a future. Wow. Join me and help make that future real. This is like... So selfless in a way. Like... The whole earth. It destroyed. was actually destroyed and then remade. Then remade? Yes. By a machine. A machine of creation. Elizabeth did this for life for us but why hades then if it was that's why it's named Gaia, hades now how did it end up in the wreckage of a feral robot and why does it want to kill me and apollo yeah, the yeah, archive yeah. of knowledge what happened to that i'm as confused as you are maybe the answers lie ahead Interesting, because I was going to say, the thing about um, this is that, um, oh shoot, what was it? Okay, the deactivation codes, right? Like, they would have to, hopefully part of the part of the plan for whatever Horizon Zero Dawn was, was to create something hit, hidden away that could spend half a century creating the deactivation codes and then using them. Um, or that, or that at this point we were, that hopefully we'd, we'd find the, those deactivation codes. So is Hades part of the Pharaoh Plague? And, or was it from Gaia and it was it's like, a, it's like a malfunctioning part of Gaia? These are interesting questions. Okay. Go to processing. You are now in possession of information regarding the true nature and purpose of Project Zero Dawn, classified far above top, se top secret. And as such, we regret that you cannot be allowed to leave this facility. There are three options available to you at this point. Please consider each carefully. Trained counselors are standing by to assist you in making your choice. How'd you like to be the counselors, right? You're the one that to help these people come to terms with this, and you're like, this sucks. <laughs> Participation. You will be assigned to a sub-project team based on your area of expertise. You should be aware that the way forward will be difficult and the project's outcome uncertain. You will be expected to work a minimum of 80 hours per week and your communications with family members will be strictly limited and monitored in real time. Upon successful completion of project, you and your immediate family, or two persons of your choosing, will be transferred to the Elysium sealed habitat to live out the remainder of your natural lives. Wait, what? Did they actually have a place where they could put people? that they could like live and die. They probably restricted, um, you couldn't have any kids anymore. Like basically it was a, you die. Like you live here and you die. But, and they, of course they couldn't make enough for everybody, right? And the whole thing is that not everybody can survive and you can't live, you can't make a viable population on a dead planet with only a few people. If a few hundred people wouldn't work, it wouldn't work. You'd die out. Oh man, this is heavy stuff though. Like I don't, I, I'm like, I'm like absorbing it, but like I feel like there's so much you could say about all of this. That like, I mean, this was bold storytelling. This was incredibly bold storytelling. Indefinite detention. Should you choose to decline participation in Project Zero Dawn, you will be confined ind indefinitely. You will be given 48 hours to reconsider, after which your decision to refuse participation will be considered irrevocable. Every reasonable effort will be made to make your term of confinement as comfortable as possible, but you will be not permitted not be permitted at contact with the outside world, and death within 18 months due to the Pharaoh Plague is inevitable. 
When the Zero Dawn facility is abandoned, detainees who wish not to opt for medical euthanasia will be released. Outside? And you can die to the machines? Like, bye bye here you go. Medical euthanasia. The information you just received is understandably calls into question the purpose of continuing to live. If you prefer to end your life at this point, a pain-free medical euthanasia is available. A 48-hour waiting period is required, during which time you may instead opt for participation or confinement. Please notify a counselor when you are ready to make your choice or if you have further questions. I mean, I can see... Thinking that everything's inevitable and you might as well just end it. But at the same time, she's brought the best of the best of their fields here. You know? Like, if nothing else, this is one last time you're make. And for some people, you could see it as, like, making a name for yourself, a lasting legacy, in that you're basically gods recreating... You're, you're creating a gods creating a god that will be able to recreate a planet and life itself. Like, these top people in their fields, like, if nothing else, I feel like the spark of a challenge in creation would burn inside of them but at the same time this could be so overwhelming that you would just you just want to end it or not i don't i don't see why you wouldn't want to participate i can see the mental breakdown causing someone to not want to participate but not die yet but at the same time like i feel like the people they bring most of them would opt in but yeah i mean these options are here and they were pro all of them were taken at some point i guarantee you Whew. Whew. So this is where you make your decision to live or die or be part of the future or not. Oop, hey, hello. Counselor guidelines two. It is vitally important to choose that candidate choose to participate in Project Zero Dawn voluntarily and knowingly without additional coercion and without value judgment on the part of the counselor. Confirm for candidates that they were to solely do their skill sets and accomplishments. Emphasize that their dedicated participation in Zero Dawn will increase the project's chances of success. Frame participation in Zero Dawn as an opportunity to respond actively in the face of an overwhelming threat. Exactly. Candidates may question the fairness of their selection. Validate such objections as normal, even admirable responses. Emphasize the value of candidates' expertise of the future, not just of humanity, but terrestrial life as a whole. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not fair. It's not fair. They're like the best of the best of the best, and they get to live because of that. Like, it's not fair to everybody else, you know? Life isn't something... The ability to, to be alive or to, to be one of those common civilians who throw themselves at the machines just to try to slow them down which I feel like is a, a war it's kind of like in Mass Effect where like you throw soldiers at least in Mass Effect 3 where you throw soldiers at the enemies but the problem is is they eventually become soldiers for the enemies most of the time your own population is turned against you and so by throwing civilians at the soldiers or at the robots I feel like who are just going to be turned into biomass biofuel like it's like a are you really slowing them down type thing but at the same time what else are you gonna do like there's nothing else to do put them in a bunker somewhere where eventually the robots will find him and kill them all without them being able to fight back like i don't know it's just like giant oil reserves basically for them and that sounds terrible and disgusting that's the way it is for them uh, likewise, candidates may balk at the morality of extending their lifespans and those of loved ones beyond zero day. Validate their hesitation. Acknowledge that. While the reward of Elysium is not fair, it will be earned, if possible. Redirect their ethical misgivings with the greater commitment of the project. I mean, yeah, like, they, it, but it would be so weird to try to convince these people, like, you're not going to be able to save them. But at the same time, like, just the fact alone that, say, if I was somehow wonderful enough and smart enough and great enough to be called to this sort of a project the fact that i could save my immediate family members is uh, hands down yes i mean i couldn't see any other choice anyway i mean i obviously there is but for me like the chance to like be able to save something in preservation for a future where instead of it just being like a robot filled apocalypse hellscape but like that that something of our history, of our people, of our of anything would be saved, and that life could continue is enough. But then the fact that you could save your whole family, that's enough. That is enough for me, you know? Uh, 
When candidates challenge the plausibility of Project Zero Dawn, permit them to review Dr. Sobek's presentation as many times as they wish, and allow access to supplemental article, blah, blah, blah. Allow them to suspend the interview to fully process this documentation. A significant minority of candidates will elect for medical euthanasia. It is important to receive this decision kindly without judgment. Advise them of the 48-hour waiting period during which counselors will be available to discuss their decision. Emphasize that euthanasia will not occur without repeated consent when the procedure is scheduled to take place. No one will be euthanized against his or her will. Candidates who elect indefinite detention must be informed that they have 48 hours to reverse the decision after which the end. Okay. This is heavy stuff. Like... I'm definitely gonna have to call it here before we continue on. Because, oh wow, okay. And we are, wow, we're only like halfway, maybe halfway through the facility. Not even, well yeah, a little bit halfway. But we have stairs going down, woohoo. Yeah, this is heavy stuff. Maybe I shouldn't have even made it as long as it is cause wowza, wowza. Oh my gosh, it's breaking my heart to think about it. I'm not even joking, it's breaking my heart. This is really, this is really intense storytelling and really bold and I hope you guys are just as intrigued as I am and I hope to see you in the next one